Welcome to the next episode of HR Mavericks. I'm Garrett Justice, and today I'm joined by Jared Olson, who's the VP of People Experience at Job Nimbus. Jared, how are you doing today? I'm fantastic, Garrett. Thank you so much for having me, man. It is so great to have you on the show today. And I'm super excited to dive into our topic today. But again, before we do, would love for you to share a little bit of context of your career background and what Job Nimbus does with our listeners. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I uh, fell into the world of HR um, and I'm so fortunate that, that I was able to. Um, I fell into it because I served a Spanish speaking mission for my church. And uh, when I returned home, my brother in law said, like, I got a job for you. You don't have to interview and it pays $15 an hour. And I was like, sweet, <laughs> let's go. Um, and I was in a, a, for a construction company and we had a lot of Spanish speakers that are coming in looking for work. And so mm -hmm. I was the only one that spoke Spanish. So I was just translating a lot, but I was translating recruiting and onboardings. And I even had cool. to translate some terminations. And so I was picking up some HR things along the way. Um, and just really, really loved it. And so since then, um, I, I typically stay places for about three years before I get uh, itchy and ready for a new change of uh, scenery and challenges. And so I work for some, uh, some silicon slope space companies, some uh, national companies, built a whole bunch of different uh, HR teams, and, uh, and now running people experience for Job Nimbus. And we are a home exterior growth uh, company. So we mm -hmm. help contractors that work on the outside of a, of a home. Mm -hmm. And uh, a large component of that is a CRM uh, solution that we have. So we really are able to help get them off of uh, paper and pencil. So if you imagine a contractor coming out to your house to help you like redo a roof or something like that, they're gonna do a bunch of manual measurements, write everything down. It's gonna take them a couple of weeks to actually come up with the prices. They're going to be late to do it. The price is going to be wrong. It's going to be a nightmare, right? We've all been there. And so our software uh, really streamlines and automates so much of that so that uh, they can come out and already have measurements based off of the partners that we work with. Uh, we talk to the roofing supply company down the, down the street. So you can show the homeowner in real time, hey, here are the colors of, of material you could pick. Here's the real time price. Uh, mm -hmm. The contractor can mark it up. And then you just sign with your finger. And when you sign, then that actually tells the construction material to deliver that day. And then the project begins, the billing comes through us. So there's no changing. And so nice. we're really changing the way uh, that homeowners experience having any work done on the outside of their home, which is Man, it's, it's fantastic. I love that. I definitely see the need for that. So very, very cool. Yeah. I love it. Um, so you, I think you have read uh, on my notes, like you've read ahead on my notes a little bit because you already answered one of the questions I was going to ask you is about, you know, why did you choose to pursue a career in HR? You shared some of that context, but tell us a little bit more though, instead about why have you chosen to stay in HR? You know, you kind of got thrown into it, like you talked about, yeah. but why have you, why have you chosen to stay in HR in your career? Yeah, it's a great question. And, and honestly, I didn't know if it was for sure what I wanted to do. Um, I got some great advice from my dad when I was young in my career. And he said, when you think you know what you want to do, find like a nonprofit group and go get involved with that group. Mm -hmm. And so early on, I started to volunteer with, with SHRM. I was the president of the Salt Lake SHRM chapter and still trying to figure out like, is, is this what I want to do long term? And honestly, it, it was my MBA that solidified it for me. Mm -hmm. um, every class that I would go to, as you peel the layers of the onion back to what the issue was in accounting or in strategy or in operations, um, there was always a culture or people related item there. And so I fell in love with culture. I fell in love with the people experience side of, of business and how that makes everything move forward. And, and HR is such a misunderstood profession. And mm -hmm. I saw how right the profession was to come in and really disrupt it, to mm -hmm. change the way that people perceive it. Um, and, and so uh, my MBA is what solidified to me like, yes, I like the, the cultural aspects of people experience more than anything else. And so that's where I've kind of gone full steam in my career of, of focusing on that and really helping trying to change the hearts and minds of people of what PX can be. I love it. That's so awesome. And I think that it's, uh, it's similar to previous conversations I've had with other HR leaders. I just, I spoke a couple of weeks ago with Elisa Garn, who was on a previous episode who talked about how, you know, HR kind of has a branding problem and that's part of what she's focused on is kind of changing that perception of, of HR. So I think that yep. totally resonates. It's good. She's, and she's it, brilliant. Yeah, I know. So, um, 
excellent precursor into our topic today too. So as you and I talked about, you know, what, what do we want to talk about in this episode? You kind of threw out this idea around the people and culture aspect, and yeah. you kind of called it the building culture around the hero's journey. Yeah. So before we really jump into it, I want you to just explain to us a little bit more, explain to me, what does that mean when you say the hero's journey and how does Perfect. that really relate to company culture? Yeah. So, um, I'll, I'll probably go even a little higher for just a second. Um, Every business and company should have a culture that's unique to them. At Job Nimbus, um, our founder, Ben Hodson, is a comic book author. He's written several <laughs> comic books. He's been at FanX on several panels and cool. he's kind of a little celebrity in, in that space. And um, when Job Nimbus got on my radar and they started talking to me, Ben started talking to me about the, the hero's journey. And how uh, the foundation and framework of how we could build our culture around that. So if you're okay with Garrett, I'd love to kind of go yeah. tactical on like, what, what does that mean for our business? And maybe there's some elements of it that uh, our listeners may want to take and apply to their business. But the precursor is this may not work for every business. I've worked for some companies where our culture has been built around video games. Mm -hmm. And we've talked a lot about how video games can influence our day-to-day -day interactions. And, and hmm. we have different meetings. And on our executive meetings, we're talking about different guns. And we're talking about the guns because they have different purposes. And are we being a shotgun or are we being a sniper rifle? And like laser focus. And so there's a lot of different ways you can do that. But if it's okay, I'd love to kind of talk to you about what the hero's yeah. journey is in detail. Yeah, let's do it. Let's break it down. Okay. Great. So um, there are three stages in every hero's journey, and you can literally uh, check, like, write down these steps, right, and watch any movie um, where there is a hero involved. Harry Potter, Nacho Libre is my personal favorite, Star <laughs> Wars, um, Black Widow, um, literally any hero goes through the same journey. And the first phase is, is called the departure. And what happens, and maybe we'll just look through at the lens of Star Wars and, sure. and the first time we meet Luke Skywalker, right? Luke is just this, this ordinary kid who lives with his aunt and uncle and cleans droids. And, you know, you see him with like multiple moons as he's walking around at the very beginning. And he's just kind of like the, ah, oh, shucks. I wish, I wish things were great. Mm -hmm. um, living in this very ordinary world until all of a sudden R2-D2 shows up and pumps out this message from this princess that says, help me, Ben, you're my only hope. And he's like, wait a second, is this the old Ben Kenobi that like lives down the street? And so he has the call to adventure. And then the next thing that he does is he goes and he meets who's his mentor, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Mm -hmm. And as he meets Ben, he realizes that he was a, a Jedi. And uh, Ben tells him in that moment, hey, did you know your dad was a Jedi and we need to go help the princess? Mm -hmm. And that's called um, uh, the, the call to adventure, right? Okay. So he gets his call to adventure. And the immediate thing Luke says is he refuses the call. No, like, no, I totally can't do this. I'm just Luke, right? I just clean droids. I got to go back and help my uncle clean the droids right now. So he refuses that call. And then Ben talks him into doing it. And they have this moment where you cross a threshold. And so that's when Luke found that his aunt and uncle were killed. He goes with Obi-Wan and they have to find a way to get off of the planet. So they, that's the hardest step in departure is crossing the threshold into the next phase, which is called initiation. Okay. And so in the initiation phase, you meet allies. And the first person that Luke meets is, is Han Solo and Chewbacca, right? Um, and so he meets them. They say, yeah, we can help you out with this. They hop on the Millennium Falcon and start taking off when they have all of these tests and trials. Luke puts on the blaster shield and has his lightsaber for the first time and is trying to feel the force. And he's, he's testing that out. When they then get to, uh, taken into the Death Star um, and he meets Darth Vader, this terrible enemy, because every hero has enemies and they escape. Um, and then they go and meet the Rebel Alliance where they come up with an approach. So the approach is a big part of the initiation phase where you sit down and say, what do we have to accomplish and how are we going to do that? And so as they're sitting down with the Rebel Alliance, they say, hey, there's this one place on the Death Star. If you shoot inside there, it's going to blow up the entire Death Star. Um, and then they have the ordeal, which is where they jump in the X-wings and they start flying. 
And as they get to the Death Star, people are getting picked off right and left, and all of his friends are are, are dying. Um, and the the climax is he's he's just about to take the shot. Um, and when he's going to take the shot, Han Solo saves in, gets Darth Vader out of the way, which helps him to to take the shot. Now, during that process, he enters the third phase, which is called the return. And in the return, there's a resurrection. And so if you look at Luke Skywalker, he's got his navigation system on when he's about to shoot and blow up the Death Star. And he hears his mentor say, use the force. And he like refuses it again. And he says, no, use the force. And he turns off the navigation system. And when he does, he becomes a Jedi. He's resurrected from Luke Skywalker to the last Jedi, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And he becomes that Jedi. He blows up the Death Star. There's a big reward that happens where he gets a medal with him and Han and Chewie gets... He gets the short end of the stick until later where he gets his medal. And then he returns as an actual Jedi. And so these stages of departure, initiation, and return are mm-hmm. critical in every hero's journey. And so what we've done with that concept is really applied it into our business. So whenever we post a position through in talent acquisition, we create a call to adventure video. Um, Mm -hmm. Instead of reading a job description, we have a hiring manager hop in front of the uh, camera and record three, four minutes. What is the guide to the galaxy? Now, the guide to the galaxy is basically a scorecard that we've created. It talks Mm -hmm. about the mission of the role, the outcomes of what the role would do if it's successful, and which values of our company values most align with that role in order to succeed. So we create a call to adventure video that outlines that. Um, if uh, a candidate applies, we then uh, have a phone call with them and we bring them into the office for what we call a cultural tour. And that's to prepare them to meet the mentor, which is going to be the hiring manager. They meet the hiring manager or the mentor. They then have get an offer. And if they get a job offer, they have a chance to refuse the call or cross the threshold. Mm-hmm. And when they cross the threshold and become a new member of our J force, um, what we call our employees, They then enter into the initiation phase and their first few days of hire, they meet all their allies. We give them mentors. We give them all the tools and resources to succeed. We prepare them for the tests and trials they're going to experience, not just in their first 90 days, but as a member of the J-Force. We talk to them about our competitors. We talk to them about the differentiators that we make. Um, And we talk to them about having a relationship with us in PX and with their leaders that if they feel their hero's journey is coming to an end, that they let us know so that we can help them resurrect as a better person to have the reward of going to a new employer with a better experience. And so we really tried to like ingrain this hero's journey all across the the, the life cycle of of one of our J-Force from pre-employee to even at the time of termination, not looking that as a negative, but celebrating. And we do weekly all hands with the company and we will celebrate our members of the J-Force that have a new hero's journey they're going to go on. And when it's their last week, we applaud them and we help them in that journey because every hero comes to an end and becomes a Jedi Knight or a Harry Potter or Mm -hmm. whatever that hero is. Man, I love this so much. There's so many, my mind is just blown right now. So many thoughts, (laughs) so many ideas. I love it. You know, personally, I, I like this resonates with me so much. I, I mean, I'm a marketer. I come from a marketing background and, you know, in the world of marketing, you often talk about the customer experience. You yeah. talk about building a brand that's there's a, there's a book called story brand, right. And a company yeah. that's focused on that. That's pretty popular and how you talk about that customer's journey, like the hero's journey. So I love applying some of those same principles that I'm familiar with from a marketing background to employees employee experience, people experience, right? And I love that really forward thinking companies, like it sounds like Job Nimbus is, are are doing that today because it's so engaging. Like it's so exciting yeah. hearing you talk about that, right? Yeah. And, you know, every time we have a new member of the J-Force start, um, their first day, our CEO, Ben, he's a brilliant storyteller. He'll tell the story of the hero's journey and he'll tell Job Nimbus's story mm-hmm. of how we started and how we evolved in each of these steps. And without doubt, uh, the end of the first week, we'll, we'll talk to the new members of J-Force. We'll say, hey, what'd you think? And they'll say, 
the best part was seeing the alignment with how I fit in the hero's journey at, at Job Nimbus. Yeah. And we do a lot of customer events and we start every customer event with talking about the hero's journey and about how they're becoming a hero and what they're going to learn at their time with us that fits inside the exact same structure that we've kind of talked about. Yeah. Um, and, and so we, we've tried to be really methodical in making sure that it's inclusive and it brings everybody in. Like we're not trying to go super heavy on like Marvel or, or just guy superheroes. We talk a lot about female superheroes and we talk a lot. I mean, I talk a lot about Paw Patrol, like they mm-hmm. Paw Patrol has a hero's <laughs> journey. They go through in every single episode. It's fascinating because yeah. my kids love that. And so um, you just start looking for the hero's junior. You're going to see it everywhere. And it also changes the dynamic between leader and uh team members because they're able to say, where are you at in your hero's journey right now? What's the, what's the approach to the problem that you have and how are you going to come out on the other end, a better person and resurrected as a new individual. So it's super fun to put it in that context and break down different business challenges. So I want to, I want to just double click on that last piece. And I want you to tell me a little bit more about that. So how are you helping people in their own day-to-day like heroes journeys? I mean, you mentioned some of it, if they're the not, not the right fit, or it's time to move on to their next journey, you celebrate that. But when it comes to like the day-to-day, right. Yeah. For employees there, how are you using that concept of the hero's journey to help them? Yeah. I love that question. So we, uh, we talk a lot about strength finders and the reason we talk about strength finders is because it's an easy way to identify your own superpowers, right? Mm -hmm. What makes you different from everybody else? And there's easy alignment that happens between strength finders and start with why like Simon Sinek's principle, because you can find your intrinsic motivators as you start to look at what your individual strengths are. And so the way that we operationalize that, um, I previously worked at Motivosity um, and Motivosity has a brilliant tool. It, it's, uh, their product is called Lead and it is a great way to do one-on-ones. Mm-hmm. And so in those one-on-ones, um, we have reoccurring agenda items where we talk about each person's guide to the galaxy, their scorecard, what's the mission, mm-hmm. what are the outcomes, what value alignment looks like. Um, and we always talk about those. And we always talk about their strengths and the things that they're learning to level up in their own individual strengths. So every week, uh, each member of the J4 sits down with the leader and it's not weekly, it's bi-weekly. And they're talking about those challenges and the approach and where they're at in the journey in that week. Mm -hmm. And so it's constantly bringing it to life. And the other thing that we, we operate in an EOS model, um, it was uh, made really popular by Gino Wickman. Um, and you've maybe heard of like rocket fuel, Mm -hmm. um, but it's the entrepreneur operating system. And we we've applied that, uh, framework at job Nimbus as well. And it gives really easy opportunities and outlets for us to talk about, um, the rocks that we're working on. It talks a lot about like that, the story of you've got a glass jar and if you put big rocks in and then sand, mm-hmm. it's not going to fit. But if you start mm-hmm. with the small stuff then, then or sorry, the opposite way. Yeah. You put yeah. the big stuff in the small yeah. stuff. And, it fits in. Um, and so we have that framework that allows us weekly to have what are called L10 meetings. And it's a, a leadership meeting and you rate it from one to 10, each member that's there. And you're able to talk about what are the things you're working on in your hero's journey during each of those weekly meetings? So using the EOS framework and using a tool that facilitates one-on-ones are two easy ways to operationalize ensuring that communication is happening. And it's an easy identifier and early indicator for leaders of if someone's hero journey is starting to come to an end or if they're being challenged or not. I love it, man. So much tangible stuff. I feel like we could probably, I could ask you, questions for the next hour and dive in deeper on all this stuff. But man, this has just been so, so awesome. Just, uh, so many ideas now that I have on things we could try and apply. So I love it. Um, you know, I just have a couple other questions for you as we're getting close on time though, is, you know, uh, the title of this podcast is HR Mavericks, right. Where we're talking to people who are out there as a maverick, someone who's kind of the lone wolf, if you will. Sometimes that's literally because they're the only HR person at their company and they're doing everything under the sun. Right. And sometimes it just means that they're kind of on the cutting edge of helping change the perception of what HR is. So my question for you is with that context, what makes job Nimbus and you and your role really in HR maverick, a maverick in the HR space? Yeah. Great question. Um, 
I kind of uh, hesitate to go to this answer because you probably have talked with Elisa about this because both of us are, are aligned on this concept of um, making PX a profit center. Um, and one of the things that we're doing at Job Nimbus right now is in the candidate experience, helping identify if you become a finalist in our interview, we want to help you find your next job. So um, if you have a phone interview with us and we don't hire you and we don't put you on our bench, we will send you a, we send you a swig drink. We say, thanks for the time. Here, here's a drink. Let's stay in touch in the future. If you become a, a finalist for a position, we don't turn candidates down. We help them find their next job. So mm-hmm. we'll reach out to other companies and we'll say, hey, are you hiring? What, posi- like, what roles do you have? We've got a great candidate for you that we'd love to hire if we had four positions open, but we only had one and they might be a really good fit for you in, in this role. And so when we call them, we actually say, hey, I think we found a better opportunity for you at this company and we've got an interview lined up for you. Cool. Now, not only is that a cool candidate experience, but we can also make that revenue generating. We can say to that company, if you hire this person, just give us a finder's fee. You know, if you hire an agency, you're going to pay 20 to 30% their annual wage. Just give me like two, three grand um, mm-hmm. if you decide to hire them. And the same thing is true for our J Force. If somebody and their hero's journey is coming to an end, instead of hiding it from us and it changing, you know, to interview a tire in the car or bathroom, Mm -hmm. just like Mm -hmm. come to, come to PX and tell us, we'll help you. We'll say, great. What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? Let me facilitate some introductions. Let me call Garrett and see who Mm -hmm. he knows and see if Mm -hmm. we can get you an interview at that place. Um, and, And so that level of trust is so different at, um, when you have this attitude of, we really could care less about your generation. We care way more about you as the individual. And if your time is coming to an end, great. Let us help you move on to the next thing. And we'll celebrate that move with you instead yeah. of being like, no, you're an idiot. Don't, don't go. The grass yeah. is greener on the other side. Um, so not only do we care about the person, but we're also able to make some money off that. It helps with our backfill and our secession plan. It lowers our time to hire. Um, and we're averaging right now uh, about $52,000 per position for time to fill um, and uh, uh, time to, yeah, time to fill. And what is it? Time to fill in something else. I forgot off the top of my head. I'm thinking, okay. too, I'm thinking too fast. But we spent $52,000 to get someone in a role. And if yeah. we can shorten that time to hire by being proactive and knowing what, a, uh, what our bench looks like, then we save gobs of money. And we also yeah. can make money when we place someone somewhere else. And it's a revenue source. So I love that. That's such, such a good idea. And again, resonates with me so much too, as, as a people manager. One of the things yeah. that I've tried to do with everyone who is on my team in the past is have you know, career conversations where we're talking about, you know, at the pinnacle of your career, when you're feeling challenged, engaged, and not wanting to do anything else, what are you going to be doing? And yeah. it's probably outside of where you're working right now and outside of the role of what you're doing right now, but help me understand that yeah. because that helps me know how I can tailor your experience while you're here at this company to help you reach that kind of career lighthouse. So I, I just, re- that just resonates with me so much. And a lot of times it's people in the past, I think the old way of thinking is you don't want to have those conversations because then people are just going to leave. And in, in actuality, it's, it's the opposite. When you yeah. do have those real conversations and build that trust, with, uh, the people that you're working with, they want to stick around. They want to work with you for, for longer. And there's actually increased retention there oftentimes, right? Yeah. It's really easy to say, Hey, what do you want to do next? That may or may not be here. It's a totally different thing to like prove to the entire company of like, we've successfully done that. And it's because we actually care about each person and to use case studies and, and their friends, like when their friends are like, Oh my gosh, like I totally went to PX. I told them I want to leave. They helped me find the thing and I'm thrilled about it. Now they also, those people that leave refer their friends to come work for us as well. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's an amazing dynamic, but it takes a lot of work to have that level of trust yeah. Because most people don't show, they don't play all their cards. They hold them close to yeah. the chest and they say, no, it's good. Like, I'm good. I'm okay. Things are all right. And then they go home and they're like, I'm miserable. So mm-hmm. you have to break through that by connecting with people where they can say like, no, things are really bad and I'm super unhappy and I, yeah. I need to move on. I love it. I, yeah, I, I love it. I think that that ties back to this 
people experience or employee experience that we've been talking about the entire time. And that's one of the best ways to really change from just HR being the, yeah. the rural red tape people to the people who can really facilitate that employee or people experience before so, they join the company and yeah. after, right? So one maybe other practical idea of something that we do at Job Nimbus is we have combined our HR business partner function, right? So an HR mm-hmm. business partner is like the, hey, you're assigned to this team. If they have questions about anything HR related, you help them. We've mm-hmm. combined that function with learning and development mm-hmm. where learning development is like building courses and curriculum and content and training and helping with onboardings. And we're, uh, we're combining adult learning with proactive business partner roles and we call it a coach. And the mm-hmm. reason we do that is because we want our PX team to be hundred percent proactive thinking, they should have such a good relationship with each person that if they see you, Garrett, and you're just visually having a bad day, they can be like, Garrett, what's up, man? How, yeah. What's going on? How can I help? Let's go jump in a room. And you can have that level of confidence to be like, yeah, I know that I can open up and they're going to be here to help me out. Like yeah. whether it's a mental wellness issue, whether it's a burnout issue, whether it, whatever it is, mm-hmm. we're more of a life coach than we are of here's the policies and procedures that you have to follow. Yeah. Um, I don't ever want to say here's here's an HR initiative. Um, I want to say we're here to help you have a great experience in your life. Yeah. And one of our company values is life balance. And so how are we making sure that you are being balanced in everything that you got going on? It's coaching, it's being mm-hmm. present, it's being aware. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we're doing some really cool things that I think make us a maverick in the space. I love it. Very, very cool. So really, really interesting and great insights. And it's just a different way of thinking about it. And I, and I love that. So last question I have for you um, is a little bit different. I think um, we've talked about this a lot today. So your answer might just be kind of summarizing what we've uh-huh. talked about today, but maybe it's something different. I don't know. So um, context for this is at, at Eddie, our company, we believe one of our, one of our parts of our vision and our mission is just that we believe that building a healthy business is one of the most charitable things you can do if you do it the right way. And so for you, what is the right way to build a healthy business? Hmm. You know, that's a really good question. I think it, I think it stems from your mission. It's kind of where my, my head goes immediately. Um, our mission at Job Nimbus is, is three words, very simple, making contractors heroes. Hmm. Um, and once again, there's that, that hero alignment. But even when I think about like our corporate social responsibility and how we're giving back in meaningful ways, we want to give back in ways that help create entrepreneurs. So hmm. our, our clientele are um, people who want to start a construction business, who want to start a roofing business or a siding company or windows and doors. And they typically have worked in the trade and then said, like, I think I can, I think I could do this on my own, but they don't always have the tools and resources to succeed. Mm-hmm. And as we focus on helping them be successful in their business, what they do in return is give a great homeowner experience. And we know that homeowners struggle when they work with contractors. <laughs> They're able to create jobs for so many people. Um, Entrepreneurs burn the midnight oil, right? We've had so many of our customers come and say like, it's hard for me to get time with my family until we started to partner with Job Nimbus because we automate, streamline, and make it simple for entrepreneurs to be able to have a life balance and not just be focused on the business all the time because you know that things are going to be covered and taken care of. And so when we think of our corporate social responsibility, it's how are we building in those areas? How are we giving back in a meaningful way that make a difference for the lives of not only our customers, but also for our J-Force and for the community at large? And yeah. when those things are in alignment, just things hum, right? There's just this harmonious beauty that happens as we're able to give back in meaningful ways. And it starts with your mission. So if, if your employees cannot say what your mission is and what your values are, and it's just not intrinsic as part of them, then you need to look at the journey, the hero's journey, and how are you having that call to adventure for what you're doing? And yeah. it all begins with what that mission is to make meaningful difference in the lives of your employees and customers. Love it. Awesome answer. 
It's a great way to summarize what we talked about today too. Appreciate it. Yeah. So Jared, this has been awesome. Really, really appreciate it. You know, if there are listeners that have follow-up questions for you, they want to dive deeper on this. What's the best way for them to connect with you? Uh, LinkedIn. I'm a, I accept every connection. I respond to just about every message if it's not a sales pitch and uh, super happy to connect with you there. So just Jared Olson on LinkedIn and uh, happy to make your connection. Awesome. Well, we will drop your LinkedIn profile in the description so people don't have to search through all the Jared Olsons out there. I don't know how many <laughs> they are, but I'm assuming there's there's more than one, right? That's right. Yep. So, all right. Well, Jared, thank you again so much for taking the time today. This has been an awesome conversation and I wish you the best and talk to you soon. Thanks, Garrett.